What's up guys, my name is Ace, and the update is finally here for Modern Warfare. This is the first update we've seen in about a month for this game. And with this comes the crossbow, five extra loadout slots, and a few other little changes and bug fixes as well. So the first thing to discuss here is the crossbow. How do you actually get it? Well, it looks like all you have to do is get five kills in a match with a marksman rifle 25 times. So that means you do have to play 25 games and in those games get at least five kills with a marksman rifle. Now this is why you're watching gameplay of me killing bots in the background with the crossbow. I didn't have time to complete 25 matches obviously before making this video shortly after the update. But I did want to show it off a little bit, at least against bots. Just keep in mind, a couple of the unique things you can do with the crossbow is there are explosive tip bolts, as well as a tear gas cartridge that you can use with the crossbow. As for the rest of it, I am going to dive much deeper when I do my crossbow guide, which should be coming in the not too distant future. As for some tips to get the crossbow the fastest, obviously you want to play game modes where you're going to be able to get through those games as fast as possible. You just want to blast through them, so you typically want to stay away from things like Domination or Headquarters for instance, because those tend to last a little bit longer. Whereas things like Team Deathmatch or Kill Confirmed, you tend to blast through those a lot faster depending on the map of course. And this is the next thing I want to mention, Shoot the Ship is back. This is the playlist that rotates through Shipment as well as Shoot House. And I would say the fastest way to blast through matches where you can use a marksman rifle is to simply play Shoot the Ship. And if possible, try to get either Team Deathmatch or Kill Confirmed games on Shipment. These go by very, very fast. And that's probably your best bet for getting that crossbow as fast as possible. Now, maybe there's some other method that I'm unaware of. And if there is, just post it in the comment section down below. And if it is a really good method, I just might pin it there so people can go check down there and maybe earn that crossbow even faster. But let's go through some of the patch notes as well. There were a few changes that I'm actually quite happy to see. The first one is something we've been expecting. We have five extra custom slots that you can use, which is great news. That's something that probably should have been there at launch, but we've got it now, which is nice. Also, Ania Palace is back in rotation for Ground War, which is great. However, at the same time, they have now removed Kravnik Farmlands from the rotation of Ground War, temporarily at least, so they can fix some out-of-match glitches that apparently they were unable to fix with this last update. Now, a few other things on the patch notes. Keep in mind, I'm not going to talk about every single little bug fix and stuff. Just the main things that will actually affect most games that I feel are actually worth mentioning. Of course, if you do want to check out the detailed patch notes, I will leave a link to that in the description down below. But another thing we got in the patch notes here is now playlists are going to properly rotate. So with your quick play filter where you can select multiple game modes to potentially play, if you had multiple game modes selected before this patch, it would find you a game in one of those modes, and then once you were in that game, let's just say you got Domination, but you had several other modes selected, you're stuck playing Domination until you completely back out and search again. So now it is going to rotate through those modes properly. I don't know if this now means that it's going to pull you out of a lobby after every single game again, which I really don't like that. I like being able to stick with the same lobby and potentially have some rivalries that form and learn how other players play and learn how to counter them over the course of several games rather than just being thrown into a new lobby every single game you play in. Now another thing is they did fix the kill feed apparently according to the patch notes here. Some strange things have been happening with the kill feed since the beta of the game and it hasn't really displayed things in order properly sometimes and some things were disappearing before they should have disappeared within the kill feed. And it was just kind of confusing, so apparently that's all patched up with this update as well, which is minor, but it is good news. Also, player collision has also apparently been fixed with this update. This is something that we did expect as well. It was announced before the update hit, but that's great to see because player collision was getting really frustrating. Also, they have patched the slide cancel for sprint out time. And this is something that the vast majority of players have probably never experienced, they've never seen it, but for competitive play, this is a really big thing. Essentially, before this update, there was a way to completely eliminate your sprint out time with a certain combination that I chose not to share and try and spread around in the community, but I didn't really use it myself either because unless you're at the really high levels of play, it's not really a practical move. But in either case, that has now been fixed, so there will be no slide cancel for the first competitive event, which I think is great at least. Also, apparently they did fix the bug that would sometimes give players invincibility, but when they got that invincibility, they're also unable to capture objectives or get kills with their weapon. They could only get execution kills. That's something that I've seen many clips of online, but I personally haven't run into at all myself. 
But in either case, that's obviously a very bad bug to be having in the game. And it looks like they've got that one covered with this update, which is good news. Next up, we got a bit of a fix to stopping power. If you guys watched my video just a few days ago, actually, when I was talking about stopping power, I mentioned that stopping power didn't boost your headshot damage at all. And this meant that in some situations, like with the FAL, for instance, if you had stopping power rounds, you could get a one-shot kill to the upper torso, but you couldn't get a one-shot kill to the head, which seems completely backwards. If you can get a one-shot to the upper torso, you should be able to get a one-shot headshot. That has been fixed with this update, which again, very minor thing that doesn't really affect that many situations, but it is nice to see a fix for that. On top of this, they buffed the trophy system. So with this, they have an increased protection radius now. Also, they decreased the radius and the damage taken by trophy explosions. So when the trophy actually destroyed an explosive, it deals damage in a certain radius there. That radius has been reduced. And also, they fixed a bug where the explosion damage and effects wouldn't trigger for the third explosion. So that's a pretty minor bug fix. But overall, the trophy system should be a bit more powerful now and a little bit less risky to use as well because there were some situations if you were hurt and you placed the trophy system down, even though the trophy would destroy an incoming piece of enemy equipment, that damage damage could still kill you. As for a couple other weapon changes, they increased the magazine capacity for the Ram 7 with extended mags. Instead of a 45 round extended mag, now you have a 50 round extended mag. And this is such a confusing change. The Ram 7 is already an upper tier gun, so I don't see any reason to buff it at all. It just doesn't make any sense. And also, it's a very strange buff to give, like five extra rounds while using extended mags. It just doesn't really seem to make any sense to me, but there you go. The extended mag is now 50 rounds instead of 45 for the Ram 7. Also, with the Mark II Carbide, they increase the bullet penetration, which is something that, I, unfortunately, I don't have any pre-patch testing of because that would just be a very unique thing to be testing with every one of the guns in the game. But just know you should be able to deal a bit more damage through cover now with the Mark II Carbine. And also, the Scar got a very slight buff. What they did here is they reduced the horizontal recoil on the initial bullets for the Scar. So this should just make it so the Scar is a little bit easier to control for those first few bullets, which is good news. I don't know if this was enough of a buff for the Scar. I think it could really use a slight adjustment to aim down sight time instead. But we'll just have to try this one out and see how it actually plays. So that's pretty much it for public matches, although there's a couple other things I wanted to mention for the competitive rule set. So this doesn't apply to public matches, keep that in mind, but I just thought it was interesting to point out. First off, in Domination, you have to neutralize flags now before capturing them. Also, they decrease the charge time of the trophy system as well as dead silence. So you're going to be able to earn dead silence more often in competitive, but to counter that, they also reduce the lightweight boost, so it will no longer boost your movement speed in competitive rule sets. In addition to that, a really interesting thing for competitive is the headshot damage multiplier has now been clamped, so at most, it will deal the same amount of damage as the torso. And that, I think, makes sense for competitive play. I think that does make for a more competitive game when we're talking about Call of Duty, because having really powerful headshots don't really make too much sense in a game like Call of Duty where there's flinch involved. So those actually sound like some pretty good updates for competitive play. Although, at the same time, I'll admit I haven't really kept much track of competitive. I don't know what the pros are going to think of these changes, but to me at least, they sound pretty good. And with that, that's pretty much it for the important things I wanted to talk about in today's update. Of course, I'd like to know in the comment section below, what did you guys think about today's update? Are you generally happy with the changes they made, or were you expecting a little bit more, or were there some changes that you're actually unhappy about? Just let me know those thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.